Before you upgrade from Perfect Mind Martial Arts version 1 to version 3, there are some very important details that you should review before as well as after the upgrade. You should have already read this detailed document that covers what to expect with this conversion as the database structures between version 1 and version 3 are significantly different. And in order to accomplish this upgrade successfully, we've had to change some of the structure and some of the functionalities. And this has rendered some functionality and objects obsolete. Items you should know that the ranks and, the ranks and stripe system will change. The ranks object will be obsolete. It will be replaced with an object called promotion. And it will create all the records. This does not mean you will not have your ranks for your students um, not carry over, as they will. But in terms of how it functions in version 3, it will be different. So the lookup to rank will be removed from the contact or student page layout. Age groups from settings will be converted to styles. Your views, email lists, and reports related to the old ranks and stripes will be outdated. Classes. Classes will be carried over, so you're not going to lose anything from your schedule. However, do know that if you added any custom fields to the class uh, page layout, they will not be brought over. The old class reporting will not function any longer as we have replacements and any views, email lists, or reports related to the old uh, to classes uh, will be outdated. Same for products. Products will be brought over. However, if you added any custom fields to this page layout, they will not exist afterwards. You'd have to recreate them. And again, any views, email lists, or reports related uh, to products will be outdated. So you may want to take a look if you have any custom fields on either products or the class object. Now, one of the first things you're going to have to do after the upgrade is you're going to have to recreate what's known in version 1 as your contract templates. So how you set, you set up someone or schedule a student to be built. So when you add a new contract, uh, you most likely will have templates that you use to enroll. These templates will not be carried over. They will need to be recreated in version 3 under an object called memberships. So this is one of the most important and probably a priority in terms of post upgrade activity that will be required. Also, there will be an object created called sync results. And it's created because the nature of version 1 that allows you to create contracts, but also to create memberships. Now, these can be created in, uh, in, independently of each other. However, if you had created contract templates that would automatically create a membership, uh, after they were uh, after they were created, so by this add membership box, it would then create a membership, and the student would have a membership. Therefore, they could t you know they could be checked in, etc. Now, because that these are separate objects and they could be created independently of each other, or contracts could be created and then never uh, and then never brought to the store for checkout. So, because of all these different avenues. There may, be, there may be records in this object that may require your attention after the upgrade. So items like membership not linked to a contract. So maybe a, a membership was created on its own. The contract was never sold. Uh, the membership and the contract, the student lookup does not match. The membership and contract type do not match. So you have an ongoing membership, but you have a limited contract, for instance. Um, countdown checkbox um, checked on an ongoing membership. So that's where if you were to have countdown checked, and this is for, uh, you know, this is now called punch pass. If you had countdown or drop-in memberships that had a number of sessions, number of remaining sessions, but the type of membership was actually set to ongoing, um, so that this wouldn't make sense. This would be conflicting data. So that is how it can populate records here. 
So membership and contract style does not match. So again, conflicting data between the two objects. So these are all the different possibilities for creating records after the upgrade. And again, it just may require your attention. So if any of these students need memberships generated, there is a way to do that in version three right from this report. And we'll go, go over that momentarily. One of the biggest changes is that the leads and student objects uh, are going to merge to become contacts, one object. And the records are categorized with the field type. And there'll be options for active student, former student, and lead. We've made it simple. Some details about the reports. There's a new class report for attendance that allows you to attend and promote students right from the report. There will be some new views, but there will also be outdated views after the upgrade. And one thing you should know is uh, if you had any custom workflows that were related to outdated objects, such as the old membership object, ranks, stripes, uh, anything related to product or class, um, that may cause data confusion or the workflow simply will not work any longer. Uh, this also translates to email lists. So if you had any email lists that were created, auto emails based on outdated objects or outdated fields, then you will have to recreate them based on the new structure of version 3. So it's very important to read this entire document before proceeding with the upgrade. After the upgrade is complete, you will log into PerfectMind straight from PerfectMind.com. And from here, you would click Login, and that takes you to this login right here. And you'll be logging in through the browser there will be no need to use Smart Client any longer. All of the development and enhancement, including this beautiful new UI, this has all been designed for the browser. And also, the navigation of Perfect Mind 3 relies very much on using the browser in order for it to be fluid and to be more intuitive. After the upgrade is complete and you're logged in, you're going to find that we have made the main menus a lot more simple. Office, money, and social site. If you're using social site apps, or if you have a Perfect Mind website, um, that is obviously your website, which is right here. All the previous menus, also known as app suites, will be listed in this pick list here under more. And those app suites were these ones right here. So it's all the same, except for the sake of simplification, your menus are now here. So your school management apps are going to be all here. So your students or contacts, calendar, the email application, where you can add your campaigns, memberships. These are your options for enrollment. So again, what used to be known as your contract templates all your options for enrollment will now be here under memberships. Your products, your reports, documents, if you were printing ID cards or contract templates or barcodes, they are now on the cloud so they can be uploaded here to documents. And then after the upgrade, this very important object called sync results. So the first two areas you're going to need to cover are memberships and sync results. You can use your contract templates as a guide for setting up all your memberships again. So again, you want all your options for enrollment in version 3 so you can enroll students. So these are just examples that will come with uh, the program after the upgrade. You can remove them if you want. You click Add right here. And then you can add all your memberships. So if you had an adult karate one-year membership, well, that is simply the name of it. You can link it to your programs or your style. And if uh, this is a one-year membership, so the duration will be the length of the membership. So limited memberships, uh, you need to put a duration, and it's in days. So a one-year membership would be 365 days. You would not check this box because ongoing memberships do not have a duration. They do not have an expiry date. 
number of lessons. This is formally known as countdown in version one. It's the same as punch pass or drop in. It's a specific number of lessons or classes. For a limited membership, your price is the total price for the say the for the duration of the membership. Add your payment pattern, how many payments, and if there's a pay now. Pay now is the same as down payment. So if they pay anything up front, such as their first month, you would add that here. And in a 12-month membership where the first month is paid up front, that would leave 11 as your number of payments. This is how you would set up this membership. If it was an ongoing membership, give it a name. You can link it to your programmer style and you would check the ongoing box and the price is the monthly rate. If they pay anything up front, you could add that here as well. So this is what you do for ongoing, uh, also known as month to month memberships. For a punch pass or countdown membership, give it a name. And then what you do is you add the number of lessons. So this is an example where this membership is 10 private lessons. And I put in the full price. And if this was something that was paid up front, I choose paid in full. And there's one payment. And pay now, well, it's paid in full, so it's the full amount. So that's what I would do in the case of a uh, of a countdown or drop in or, or punch pass membership. It's very important that you add all of your memberships. So again, what was your contract templates in version one? The next step is going to sync results. And it's going to group it first by the type of contact so active student, former student, and if you had any leads, that would be another group. And then within that group, it's going to separate it by the reason the record was generated here in this report. So as we went over before, membership that was not linked to a contract. Membership and contract type, they do not match. And for former students, this is a group where membership is not linked to a contract. Now, maybe for my former students, it's not a big deal because they no longer have or need a membership. But my active students is probably what I want to concentrate on. So what I can do is I can click on the student's name. And I could navigate by clicking on their name. Navigate right to their page. And if the student has an active membership, and the membership data is correct, then perhaps I don't need to add a free membership. So this is the new page layout. The membership details are visual at the top of the, of the screen. And then the top section is has their name. It'll have the general information. And it'll have their type. Active, you know, again, the choice are active student, former student, lead. And if uh, you know, I look at this record and this student has uh, the correct information. It's an ongoing membership, monthly rate of $100. And by clicking on this membership, I can see all the invoices related to it. This is a nice, nice feature of version 3. Um, I can look at everything to see, okay, is this all correct? Here are all the completed invoices for this membership. Here are the scheduled invoices on this date and for this amount. If this looks correct, I don't need to do anything with the record in the sync results uh, report. I could move on. Again, everything that is in here, just it may require your attention. If no action is required, you do not need to do anything. Now, while we're on this page layout, uh, I can introduce uh, uh, some other details about it. Uh, again, by clicking on this membership box, uh, I can see all the invoices related to the membership. If I needed to return or re print a receipt for a completed invoice, all I have to do is mouse over actions now and I can refund, I can print a receipt, or if a chargeback had been filed via the processing company, I could update this invoice that it was actually charged back. So it would remove it from my revenue reports. 
For scheduled invoices, I could process now and I can forfeit. So everything is within one click now. I don't have to navigate to multiple objects uh, to manage my billing or my memberships. So this is a very, very nice feature. Now, um, after you've gone through all of this and you've added all your memberships, uh, then you can be prepared to learn more about how version 3 works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to log into uh, an alternate database. And show you how this new version works. One of the benefits of version 3 is everything is going to be in less steps, less clicks, and you'll be able to access information, reporting, and general the, the general functionality of the program is going to be much simpler uh, and, and more intuitive. It's also going to be more helpful for training staff as well uh, in terms of knowledge transfer. So again, just remember that uh, the two menus are very simple. Office, this is your school management apps. Money, uh, this is going to have transactions, um, your income, your expenses. If you want to add expenses manually, you can do so here. And if you want to add vendors uh, that you want to link to your expense records, and then the reporting, of course. Uh, clicking reports will take you to the general reports object that has all your reports. Now, one thing is that with leads and students now combined into contacts, all of your views will be listed here visibly in the left column. Your active students, your leads, absent last seven days, your former students, etc. So everything is uh, a lot more visual now rather than being uh, you know, hidden in a pick list. So when it comes to adding any uh, any contacts, you just click the plus sign and you fill in all the information, first name, last name, select their type, their contact information, phone numbers, addresses, whatnot, date of enrollment, well, that actually will be auto filled when you sell a membership, uh, campaign, so how they heard of you, so if it was through your Facebook page or if it was a referral, you could select this. If you don't see the right option, well, you know what? You can uh, just add a new campaign option right here. And then once, th once everything is added, and they're in the system as a lead, I will show you how you enroll your students. So previously in, in version one, you would have to go to contracts and you'd have to click new, choose a template, change any details, save it, then go to the store and then check out. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a lot quicker now in version three. So there's a couple ways it can be done. You can enroll a student right from their page by clicking add membership. That will take you straight to memberships. And I could then enroll them in my, uh, say, my adult karate uh, membership. I can click on this. And I can click Buy Now. And it will load up their name right here in the cart. And uh, Payment Starts. This was known as the Deferred Payment Start Date in version 1. So, you know, the first automated payment, for instance. So if I'm going to build a student on, say, the first of every month, um, but they pay their first month up front, so I've got my pay now 125, this is when their first scheduled payment would be. So maybe if it's, if it's in a month from now, it's actually going to be on March the 1st. If they have a payment method already on file, I can use it right. Uh, use that by clicking right here. Or if I need to add a new one, well, I can simply add their credit card information right here. 
if I need to override the price, I can do so right here in the cart um, by typing right in here and, and changing whatever I need. If I need to apply a discount, I can do so. Activate date is the start date of the membership. So what was known as contract start date. And if you need to change the expiry date, you can also do that here, as well as alter, uh, uh, editing the down payment amount. All of this can be edited here, right here in the cart. And once you're ready to check out, all you have to do is click complete. And after this, the student uh, will be enrolled, the membership will have been sold, and then you're going to have options for printing a receipt, emailing a receipt, uh, or you can print the contract. So now I'm on the final screen. We have purchased a membership for a contact, and would you like to make this person an active contact or an active student? I would click yes. And here now are my options for printing receipts. Uh, this is emailing a receipt, or I can print their contract. And the contract will be uh, an option from documents up here. Um, so your documents are all on the cloud. And now if I click on this student's name, it will take me straight back to her page. I'll see the name of the membership, her program. Uh, I see, this tells me how much time is remaining on this membership. One year, zero months and zero days. If I mouse over it, it will tell me when it expires. And I can see all the details. It's active. This is the monthly rate. And again, I can click on this. And I'll see all the invoices related to it. Now, one of the new features of Perfect Mind is the freeze feature. This also works um, instead of putting accounts on freeze or on hold if you have a student that needs to change their billing date. Uh, let's say that this student is unable to pay on the first of every month. Well, then I could say, uh, you know, maybe I need to change it to the 10th. Well, now I can do that. I can click here and I have the option of clicking freeze. And I choose when their invoicing or their, their payment processing will resume. And we're going to say it's the 10th of the month. And by freezing the transaction, the next invoice, next invoice will resume on March the 10th instead of March the 1st. Future invoices are scheduled to process on day 10 of every month. And then I would click freeze. The membership is now on freeze. And if I were to click on it, I'll see that the billing date has now been rescheduled for the 10th of each month. Now, in addition to being able to uh, sell memberships, I can combine memberships and products in one transaction. Now, when I'm selling products, my product sales functions just like membership sale, uh, selling. So if I were to sell a sports bag, I can uh, either check this and click uh, check out, or I could add it to my cart, or I could click on the item, and I have the same options. I can click check out, and I can just sell this one item or if I needed to sell multiple items, I could click on this and this, and I can add to cart. Add to cart. And by doing this, this number up here in my shopping cart icon will increase. So now I have three items. If I click on the cart, I'll see my three items right here. So if I were to enroll um, this lead, and I'll put them in my karate program, or my karate membership, and I also want to sell them something in addition, addition so maybe a t-shirt or a uniform. So I can actually click away from here and go to products because my membership is still one item in my cart up here. 
And then I can also add a sports bag. And you'll see this is now a number two. And I click on the cart. And both items are here, my membership and my product. So they can be combined in a single transaction. And everything else still applies in terms of being able to manually override uh, pricing, the membership start date, the expiry date, and of course, adding any payment methods I need, when the payments are going to be scheduled, and then completing the transaction. Now, in addition to uh, the page layout that we briefly reviewed, uh, there's a section at the bottom of the page layout called Ranks. So this is where the ranks for your students will be. And Perfect Mind version 3 does support not only multi-membership per student, uh, but also multi-style. So a student can have more than one rank. Now, when you're looking at the ranks section, you can click on it and you'll see the program it's related to, uh, the enrollment date, and you'll see their readiness level. There are three different types of readiness. Not ready, almost ready, and ready. And based on criteria that you have in settings, every day Perfect Mind will automatically calculate the readiness of your students. I uh, will display their white or sorry their uh, their current rank and their next rank. It will tell you their last promotion date, what stripe they're currently on, what their next stripe is going to be, when their stripe is most likely due. Again, this is going to be based on the criteria that you have in settings and we'll we'll cover that in momentarily. And attendance data related to this particular program or this particular rank. You can promote your student right from here. You can also promote them right here. Uh, this is right on their page. And they could be promoted up here as well. So speaking of programs and ranks, uh, one of the places you may want to go to is settings. And if you mouse over your name, it'll be, uh, this is the global menu here and then you would click on settings and if you scroll down under apps there is a section called martial arts and then you would click on program slash style in version one in settings there was programs and style as options and so we kind of reduced the redundancy of that and what we've done is we've combined programs and style uh, into one area So if you look at each of your programs, and this one is Adult Karate, and I have the name of my program, and I also have the progression method, so how the students progress from one rank to the next. There are three options in version 3, by time, by attendance, or both, by time and attendance. This is something you may want to check before proceeding with actually using version 3, if you want to use it for rank promotion and other functionality related to that. So based on the progression method that you choose, um, then you would need to update each of the rank records accordingly. So for instance, I've got an adult karate program and the progression method is by time and attendance. So let's look at my white belt. My white belt, the order number is number one. It's the first belt. Uh, this is, um, again, it'll display the, the progression method. If I want to track stripes, I can check the box for enable stripe. And then I can set up my stripe progression. So how many stripes for this belt, how many attendance is required per stripe, and if there's a minimum number of days between the last stripe that is awarded and when they would test or they would be promoted. So if, say there's a two-week or a three-week period, um, you just add this number in days. The rank progression settings uh, are broken down into days. This is the time part and then the attendance part. So again, what you're going to fill in is dependent 
on your progression method for the program. So if it's by time and attendance, then you're going to need to fill all this out. And this is just going to calculate the readiness of the student, not when they're actually necessarily going to be promoted, but when they're ready to be promoted or be scheduled for an exam. So in terms of the time for them to be ready, if it was, say, three months, well, then the days would be 90 days. And it's really up to you to choose what you want for an almost ready level. Maybe if they're two weeks shy within reaching that mark, that would be when they're almost ready. And that goes for the attendances as well. You'll have to decide how many classes as a minimum before they would be considered ready versus almost ready. So you would need to make sure everything is completed for all of your ranks and then for all of your programs. Now, when it comes to the reports, there is a new attendance report called Class Report. And this is a very dynamic report. This report will allow you to be able to attend and promote students straight from the report. All you do is load up the day and then the class, the specific class. Anyone who attended this class, they were checked in, uh, will be listed here. You'll see their name, their rating, the program, their ready date, when they were last promoted, and you can promote their rank right from the report. If anyone scanned in for classes that are outside of what they're booked for, or if it was outside of the scanning ranges, but you have makeup classes checked, then they would be listed here under makeup students. Any students that you book for your classes, they're booked into classes here on the calendar, they will be listed under not attended. It gives you the ability to attend them right from the report. That means you could take your attendance uh, with a mobile device, such as a, a smartphone or an iPad. And then the report will also display uh, any students with need info, any details in that field, any stripes they have due, if they're due for renewal, and any medical conditions that the instructor should be aware of. There are new marketing reports to track email sent and how many leads and students uh, that you've acquired by campaign. There are new membership reports that will show you your memberships by status. Those are expiring within 60 days. And it breaks down into limited memberships and your punch passes, and anything that has an expiration date within 60 days. And you can also look at how many memberships you've sold by program. So this would actually break down your different memberships that you've sold uh, by program or style. The money folder. If you are using Billing Direct, that means you're using Perfect Mind for all of your payment processing, then you can use the Bank Reconciliation Report to be able to line up all of the batches processed using Perfect Mind and match it up with your bank statement. Billing and Payments. This is a report that will separate your revenue, and it has a completely adjustable date range. You can separate your revenue by membership revenue versus products versus other. You can see those credit cards expiring next month, any EFTs you currently have in progress. It also comes with a forecast report, so you can look, set any date range that you like, and it will show you all scheduled invoices within this date range. Your delinquent report is called overdue. And this will be any invoices that are past one day overdue. Any taxable sales you've made will, be, uh, will show up here on the sales including tax. Successful payments is all successful payment records grouped by payment method. It will then group it by cash, check, credit card, and EFT. This also has an adjustable date range and rank promotion. You can uh, run reports for um, those due for promotion uh, this month, etc. The uh, email application uh, just got a lot easier uh, just because it's now just 
uh, one screen, a very simple, clean interface for sending emails such as, um, you know, if you send a newsletter to your active students, well, you can just click, uh, just click on two and pull up all your email lists. So I've got my active student list. And if I'm sending them a newsletter, and then I can type up my email. And if I want to personalize it for all the recipients, well, I can still use merge fields. It's this tag that's located right over here. And then I can scroll down and select, say, first name. I can type up my email. Um, using the editor, I can upload images. I can also upload documents, which will generate uh, a downloadable link. So if I want to attach uh, something like a, you know, a PDF, maybe my new schedule, I can use Document Manager and have the document accessible via a link rather than needing to have it uh, as an attachment. And of course, like anything, I can uh, dress up the content any way I like and make any edits that I need. And I can simply just click Send. Or if I need to automate anything, I just scroll down and send up the sending pattern. So um, if it's going to go just one time, and that's one time once the filters on this list, once that criteria is met, does it go out just once? Or do I want it to go out every time the criteria is met? So maybe that would be an example of when uh, I want a, a We Miss You email going out to students uh, whose last attended date is 14 days ago. That's maybe something I want to go out every time that the criteria is met. Uh, but everything is now just in within, within one place, so it's much easier to use. And as for the calendar, the calendar is very fast, easy to use. If you need to book any students for any, uh, for any classes, well, it's a matter of just... Uh, double clicking on your class. If you're booking students, well, you're going to book them into the series. Uh, that really hasn't really changed. I uh, just click on attendees. And then I can do a search and I can book in my student. And if I need to take any uh, attendance using the calendar, uh, well, then I would just open up just the occurrence. And if I had any attendees here, uh, I can change their status from booked to attended. And if they're not listed here in those that are booked, well, then I could simply add them by doing a search right here. Now, Perfect Mind uh, has an extensive help center, which you can access in the upper right corner by clicking help. It's nicely organized with a table of contents right here. It comes complete with videos, instructions, and screenshots. All the subtopics are accessible here by clicking on the main topics. And per this, uh, this help center is also searchable. So I can type in anything that I need to find results for and it will return any matching results. In addition to this, we also offer live open Q&A training three times a day. So on championsway.com, you would just click support, then live training. And then here, you can see the schedule for the training. And when you want to access the room, all you need is an internet connection and audio. And you would just click here. And you simply just enter as a guest. So this is a great resource um, for any ongoing training questions that you may have, especially after you've upgraded to version 3. We thank you very much for watching this video. We thank you so much for your ongoing support. And we also hope you enjoy using Perfect Mind version 3.